My name is Khalid Al Mufti. Uh, I'm currently leading an initiative called E Libya. Uh, I got involved in the Libyan uh, uprise uh, last year, part of this what's becoming known as the Arab Arab Spring. Before that, I had my own uh, business in uh, telecom and IT. I, I have two private companies, and I was uh, working in the private sector in Libya and, and elsewhere. In the early days in the revolution, we uh, uh, in the eastern part of Libya, where things moved quickly, uh, we were cut out from most means of communication. So the internet was shut down, uh, international calls were shut down, and uh, mobile telephony was shut down. And uh, so it was part of a, a group who works in the telecom sector and others, both in the government mainly. Uh, ex-government uh, companies and uh, other individuals with the background of telecom to start to restore and building various networks to enable communication. When the interim government was formed, this group became the Ministry of Communication. The ELB initiative has two main aims. The aim number one is uh, try to improve the quality of life in Libya through use of technology. Uh, number two is uh, we try to create a new marketplace uh, to drive the private sector in Libya. And we have very high number of unemployment, over 30% among young people, which is quite high. In, uh, and when I say young people, in Libya this is important because uh, over 70% of the population under 30 years old. So that's a big number. Um, so we are trying to encourage the private sector to be more active. Uh, and create a market for them. In practice, there are four initiatives within eLibya. There is the open government. Open government is to do with transparency and accountability within government, which is very important in, in building the new democracy in Libya. We have e-government, and this is also critical in providing uh, the services, the government services to the citizen in a way that's more transparent in a way that will uh, reduce corruption, but also improve the quality of service than the current bureaucratic manual system. Third is e-commerce uh, and how all this e-commerce phenomena uh, can add to the local economy. Fourth and some very critical one is the e-learning and how e-learning can improve the education system in the country. The technology in Libya on, on the GSM side and the mobile side is, is quite good. So we have a penetration of uh, mobile penetration over 100%. And uh, we have two mobile operators. On the internet side, on the other hand, it's much lower. So uh, internet penetration is less than 20%. Since the revolution, Libya have the highest Facebook uh, participation among North African countries. Uh, Twitter becoming very, very popular uh, as well, and uh, uh, the whole social media phenomenon is becoming like uh, crazy. Today. And uh, slowly, slowly, we are pushing uh, 3G in uh, into play, so we will have can access internet via their mobile. Still, the speed and things is not great, but we are working on that. We are already beyond the phase of the revolution and we are concentrating in the rebuilding of the country now. And so things are getting back to normal. Obviously, the major challenge is building our institution, which we had very weak institution before and sometimes non-existence. Uh, obviously, it takes time and obviously we are also busy with developing our democratic process. But day-to-day -day activity and day-to-day -day life is becoming back to normal. The way the technology played part in the Libyan revolution, it's uh, become clear to us how powerful technology can be in, in democratic process. And uh, it's, it will be in the heart. And this is why we have the open government in uh, one of the initiatives of e Libya.